Bring them in my office, Carter. We'll interview them here. I've asked you all to be here so that we could compare notes. And, and perhaps get some new lead on this spider business. You'll do the interviewing, Dick. Ah, here they are now. Gentlemen, thank you for coming. I want you to meet Dick Tracy. How do you do? Joe Crane is my name. I'm mighty pleased to meet you. Gee, Dick Tracy. My name's Perry. Say, I've heard an awful lot about you. How do you do, Perry? This is Bill Moffat, Dick. He works for the telephone company. Well, I'm glad to know you, Bill. How do you do? Mr. Tracy has a few questions he'd like to ask you. Gentlemen, these are all assistants of mine. You may speak freely in front of them. Please be seated. Mr. Crane, you are a conductor on the P&M Railroad, are you not? Yes, sir. I understand that some months ago you witnessed a strange meeting which took place on board a train. Would you mind telling us about it? Well, it was a late train pulling out of the P&M station for Los Angeles. <laughs> you know why you're here. Perhaps you're afraid of me. Well, I'm not. Nor do I consider him useful to me. We understand each other. We're organized. What Maybe good is he to us? Maybe he will have something to say about that when he comes. Suppose he does. He's not here. And what if he were? Are we sheep that we follow him blindly? Man isn't human. Nah. I don't think he's on the train. Gentlemen, you, what is your report? Fine. Yeah, everything fine. Takono. Fine, Chief, fine. Everything is okay. My affairs are in excellent shape. You wish to hear what I have to say? Then listen. I'm through with you. The rest might be yellow and lick your boots, but not me, not me. I'm not afraid of you, nor of anything you can do. Figure out how that fellow with the lame foot got on 
Or left the train. The man with the lame foot is the man we want. He is undoubtedly the head of a powerful organization. The spider ring. Mr. Perry, tell us what you know. I deliver milk, Mr. Tracy. I had just started on my route early in the morning, before sunrise. I noticed a man who acted crazy. He seemed scared of something. He was trying to get away. Immediately, phone the police. But the man was dead. That spider mark had actually burned into his skin. The lame-footed man again. Some sort of a fiend who brands his victims with a spider mark before killing them. Ellery Brewster was killed that way. One victim they didn't quite kill. Steve, remember Death Valley Johnny? Steve and I suspected the spider ring was after Johnny. Do you have a gentleman registered here by the name of uh, Death Valley Johnny? I should say we have. He's right over there in the midst of all those reporters. You can't miss him. Wait a minute, boys. Will you have a cigar? Oh, I said, will we have a Johnny? cigar? You're a great guy, Johnny. Will I give you the headlines or will I give you the headlines? It's all right. Hello, Hello. Martin. Hey, don't forget to print the best one. Oh, yes, Hello, boys. Have a cigar. No, thanks. I don't use them. You? No, thanks. I smoke cigarettes. Oh, cigarettes, eh? <laughs> well, sit down and let's have a powwow. Well, we don't mind if we do. <laughs> don't mind if I smoke. No, go right ahead. Help yourself. All right. Uh, what newspaper are you boys from? We're not from any newspaper. I'm Dick Tracy, Federal Bureau of Investigation. This is my assistant, Steve Lockwood. Well, what brings you here calling on me? We're here in your interest. We have reason to believe a certain criminal ring may cause you trouble. Yeah. Listen here, young men. I've guarded the whereabouts of that mine for nigh on to 20 years. And no hombre's going to get it away from me. Besides, <laughs> the gold won't be mine after 10 o'clock tonight. <laughs> I'm selling out. Does anyone besides yourself know where the gold is? <laughs> no, sir. I kept the secret of that mine in my head. And I ain't gonna open my yap until those jewelers sign on the dotted line. Jewelers? Yes. I'm selling out to a big firm of New York jewelers. <laughs> and, uh, it a good stiff figure, too. <laughs> Death Valley Johnny got it that same night. Now, sir, I suppose you won't mind disclosing the whereabouts of your hidden mine. I suppose the specimen gold is kept there. Yep. I'll draw you a map. Here you are. All right, thank you. Ain't no trick in finding it once you get on the right track. There. That ought to be plain and simple like. That will be fine. Mr. Nolan, I'd like to see that map, if you don't mind. I must say your actions are most peculiar. I'm sorry. Come, sir. Give us that paper. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come Death Valley Johnny didn't die. I guess he was too healthy and tough for the spider ring. The thing which ties these crimes together is the spider mark. 
and the walk of the man with the lame foot. Ah! What's the matter, Mike? I've seen a spider. And now, Mr. Moffat, tell us what you know. Yes, sir. I was sent by the telephone company to trace a bum connection. I traced it down to a kind of a spooky looking place away out of town. It was night. Something queer was going on around there, so I stuck around to get a load of what was happening. Is he still alive? Bring him inside, quick. Come. What is it, Burke? We brought Gordon Tracy here. Send Tracy into me. He's hurt, dies. We have to chase him, and he ran his car over a bank. Can and... you do anything about it, Moloch? If he's not too far gone, I might do more than you can imagine. seems critical. What if he should die? Then we will eliminate a very dangerous enemy. He won't die. But by means of this operation, a simple altering of certain glands, he will be unable to distinguish between right and wrong. In that event, he will be very useful to us, Moloch. It was no mistake as to who they had, sir. It was Gordon Tracy, all right. My brother. There's no telling what those fiends have done to him. <laughs> 